Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we have some interesting news that you guys will definitely want to see. And this is about Key Mesh. So some time ago we talked about Key Mesh. It's an amazing tool that Pablo Dubarro and also Daniel Martinez is working on together. And we've talked about a lot of things about this. So the last time we talked about Key Mesh, it was still in its most, most early stage. Very experimental. No one was able to have access to it. You know, we talked about the huge potentials that this is going to bring into the industry and also to those working with Blender and we looked at the things that actually works and things that probably might not. And today it's pretty interesting to see that we have this available right here. So for anyone who has been waiting for Key Mesh all this while, you can now literally go over to the link in the description and grab Key Mesh and start working with it. Contrary to what we thought that Key Mesh was going to look like, Key Mesh is coming to Blender as an add-on. So previously I kind of felt like maybe it's going to be something that's going to be built into Blender, but unfortunately Unfortunately, this is something that you have to go over to the GitLab, download this, and you'll be able to play with it. So this is its alpha version. So it's 0.1, the very first public alpha version that you can lay your hands on. And in most cases, I would like you guys to consider this as a very, very experimental feature that you can work with. So the key mesh is supported for Blender 2.91 and above, like the one I tried. And anyone who has any of the recent versions of Blender, you would also be able to play with it. So how does this work? You download that, you go over to edit, go over to preference, and then you do your installation. Now, once you're done with that installation, press N on your keyboard and you would notice that we have key mesh here. So there's a couple of things I would like you guys to take out of this. You know, I want you guys to see some of the cool things that you can do with this first before you proceed to start playing with it. Let's start off with the very basic. The very basic thing here is if you click on the button called keyframe mesh, you're actually in a keyframe on this mesh. I will explain what this means later. So I can now go in there, press the tab key, and then tap three on the keyboard, select any part, press I on the keyboard, you know, the very regular stuff that we do all the time and extrude that inwards. And once I press the tab key out, this is the key that is saved. So I can go over to a frame like so, and then I can click right here and make sure you click on keyframe mesh for you to actually get something happening. All right. So I can do that. Now select this, press the tab key, select this other one, and I'll just do that one more time, insert it and extrude it all the way up. That's a little bit too much. Okay. So let's also select this one and bring this down and press the tab key and go back. And that is what is saved here. So if I move backwards, forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, crazy. Now you can move and use this for a lot of things. For those who like to make stuff, so probably you're into architectural visualization, you will definitely find this one very interesting as well. So you think it's just going to be here and no, it simply works for everything. So if we go over to frame 20 and then I select this, press the tab key and hit control B to bevel this. And you know, I'm just going to keep this. All right, let's roll the bevel. That's cool. So I'm just going to roll this bevel, click there, press the tab key. You would notice that because I didn't add any key here, this is automatically locked to the previous key. So if I go back, you see what we have. And if I go back here, that's what we have. So how do you now save something like that? All right. So how you can do this is, you know, basically like what I said, make sure you have a key turned on then if you press the tab key select ctrl b move this down and now once i click that press the tab key you now have that there so now we can go backwards and forward so you can also use this i mean if you have that time and patience you can use this to show how to create stuff by literally keyframing every individual step of your model creation saving it as a file and sending it over to them so they can now go in and be like okay so the first step he did was this that and that all right this is also going to be very useful now let's take a look at something else you guys would love so if i go in and hold down alt on the keyboard actually let's get a brand new scene because that would make more sense so if i go in here and let's take out this and bring susan so we're just gonna get susan here and i will subdivide susan by three right click smooth shade select that click over here and apply so with this here take a look at the magic so the magic here is you have this object selected we are going to take a look at the sculpting so the first time we saw key mesh being teased it was teased for sculpting and it's just interesting to see that it kind of works everywhere despite the fact that lots of people use this for sculpting you can literally use this for a lot of things okay and i guess you can also
also use it for grease pen so that is actually something we haven't tried but maybe we might give it a shot so press f on the keyboard to increase this and i'm just going to drag this one all the way out and from here we can do some stuff okay so let's press n on the keyboard grab this go over to key mesh click on this button to key mesh this mesh all right make sure you have that mesh selected then click on the key mesh that way you can you know activate that stuff and you can see that here so at this point we can select any of this let's select that elastic deform let's actually select the pose huge shout out to pablo for making this one happen so let's press f to get that happening there and we can keep this at a frame like that move this to frame 10 10 looks good let's go right there and then click on this button and of course we can also do something like this and we can move over to 20 and we can add the new key mesh all right and then we can also let's maybe do something like this actually let's go over here and maybe do a little bit of a twist let's make that a bit stretchy i think stretchy might be cool so we can make it a bit stretchy so let's add another key mesh and then we're just going to make that stretchy or maybe let's squash that just a little bit okay so we have that there we can move around and we can do stuff like this cool so you can see it goes back this way all right so something crazy that you guys would also like to see is once you're working on a model like this and you would like to attach some stuff we can press the key mesh one more time or keyframe mesh and then we can press the tab key hit shift and a on the keyboard bring in something it could be anything maybe we can just simply bring this one as it is and we can move this all the way up so we can move this all the way up and we can do some crazy things with it let's also scale this down and maybe position this one about a point like that hit this button to do a simple rotation and we have that so in case you want to include multiple meshes you can also include multiple meshes and we can just simply press the tab key and automatically this is stored so we can go from this to that all right so you can do all of these things and in case you might want to do some remeshing stuff like that you can also do all of these things so if we go back and simply go over to the sculpting room and we choose to do a simple remesh like this we can you know do a simple remesh like so and that is also stored so you can go this way that way and you can do all of this so unlimited opportunities you have lots of cool things that you can do now you might be asking what and what other things do i need to know now there's a couple of tricks i think it's best i get to share this with you guys and how this one works is uh, like this so let's go over to 50 and for example you would like to get this mesh all the way back okay so let's say this is the mesh you want to get back at the end you want to create this endless loop of this particular thing going back and forth if this is the thing you're looking for you can simply copy and make a paste all right the same way you can do your simple copy and pasting of frames yep you can also do that and once you get over to this frame you'd notice you have that there other things that you can do is you can also see how these things are saved. So the whole idea of how this thing gets saved, that is a little bit different from what you get when you're working with blend shape, AKA shape keys right here in Blender, is when you go over here you would notice that we have a couple of vertex groups so we can click down here and you can start noticing that we have different vertex group for everything that we've made so if i simply click on this you would notice we have one two three four and five and right here we have also one two three four and five so you can also choose to copy these things across so right now that we have this frame we can go over to a simple part like this and we can click on keyframe this mesh and we have that frame there and we can simply go back and select from a multi of several stuff that we've done before and we can just say we want this one to be what we will have there or we could say we want this to be what we would have there and that automatically gets saved on the selected or on the active keyframe that is existing so this way it's going to be easy for you to reuse several poses instead of redoing these poses over and over again and real quick before we go there's a couple of things that i found out that you guys might actually find interesting so if we go in there and we choose to do this all right so let's say we subdivide this mesh and we go in there and throw in a multi resolution now you guys already know that this is highly useful for sculpting so if we grab this object and now go over to the sculpt mode and simply select anything let's select anything all right and click on the key mesh i'm just going to drag this one up a little bit then click right there so what we're doing is, you know, we do something like so. So we can have that as the first frame, go over here and do this, you know, and have this as the second frame. So we can just do a hashtag follow me or something or hashtag subscribe, you know, you know. All right, so we can do this. Now we can go back and forth. Now the beautiful thing there is whatever you do, as far as you have a modifier there, it saves it. 
And it's it's quite interesting. I don't know if this is a bug, you know, if it's going to be something interesting or if it's just there because, you know, we have this. But it saves it and I find it very interesting, all right? So to me, it is a good thing to have something like that. So we can also go in here and we can do some stuff like this and do some stuff like so. So I can actually make about three. So we can go like, all right, so that wasn't saved. So I'm just going to undo all of this and get rid of that and add a key right there and do this one more time one two and finally three so this way we can now go one two three one two three all right so for those who would like to use modifiers to do their stuff this is highly highly useful okay so there's a lot of use cases for this for sculpting right there you can have it for those who would want to go in there and use this as a form of educational guide to do some modeling this is also useful if you want to show like step by step you can also use that or use this as a good feature to show that stuff and for those who like to sculpt and add additional models and and add additional models directly onto their sculpt you can also do this and you know have fun working with it so this is a very very useful stuff and a huge shout out to martinez and also pablo for making this one possible so beautiful stuff that you have here and at any point in time you have unused meshes that you don't want to work with you can simply click on the purge and it will simply purge every single thing that you don't want to work with that exists with your blender file and while we're speaking about things that are possible there is also something pretty interesting I would like you guys to see. So what we have here is Blender 2.93 and you know we already talked about the fact that it supports the Vertus painting. So just in case you have no idea how to get this on active, you need to go to edit, go over to preference, let's drag this one right over here and then you need to go right over to where we have the interface and make sure you have developer interface turned on and there you'll be able to see or the developer extra and there you'll be able to see the experimental now once you click on experimental you'll see the vertex color and also a couple of things once you turn that on these buttons are going to be active and from here you can change the coloring to vertex now once you have the coloring set to vertex we can click right over there move this all the way up select that and if we press f on the keyboard we can paint of course this is not going to register because we haven't clicked on the keyframe mesh so once we click on that and we do this right now you notice we have that so we can now move over to a different space in time select the keyframe all right and keyframe that mesh and do something like this we can actually change the color so let's go ahead and change the color like so and then we can move over to somewhere else as well and maybe we can get a different color altogether something like that add a new key and that way we can get this now take a look at this beauty so we can go one two three it's not only affecting the mesh it's affecting everything that has to do with mesh and this also works alongside all right so you know we are right here so this also works alongside with the face set so for the face set as well you probably might be wondering does this also support face set yes it does so we can make a face set right here and we can go over to somewhere else add a new keyframe and we can add a different face set go over here add a new keyframe and add another one so take a look at this beauty all right so if you're wondering what about texturing what about all of this yes it supports all of them so take a look at the combination of both grease pencil and key mesh and there are unlimited opportunities of things that you can create with the combination of this this is more like it and for those who would like to try this link is going to be in the description so you can go over and take a look at key mesh and see what amazing things you can do right now i'm just going to tell you guys that this is not the most stable add-on that you can get so try to work with it as graceful as you can and also apply a couple of cautions when you're working with it don't use this for your major or your final projects or you know serious projects just play with it it's still within the alpha it might have a couple of bugs and you should be able to get good with those so these are little things that you need to keep in mind while working with this and that's about it tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this Peace.